What's up, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Big Classic Talk with my man Walter Sellers. Yo. Fred Biggie Smalls, we are here to discuss some topics. We are three weeks, less than three weeks from the O. Man, and, uh, I sent my picks. You did, you did. You had your predictions. So we're going to read Walter's predictions right here. Yeah. No offense to anybody, we might have left off. My, my man bad, says, though. Samson for the gold. Hottie for the silver, Derek for the bronze, Nick fourth, fifth, Andrew, Hunter in sixth. He's got Brandon, Curry, Mr. former Mr. Olympia all the way down, and seventh place, Crizzo at eighth. I, I mean, I'm going to give this list a C. But, <laughs> but you know. Okay. I, I don't Pick think. Pick it apart. When it comes to Samson, um, I still don't feel like he's going to have the conditioning enough to beat Hottie and Derek. That, that's my issue with him. I think about the symmetry. I don't think his back can beat Derek. Um, I don't think he's going to be grainy enough to beat Hottie. And uh, I think his legs are phenomenal. I mean, from the front, head to toe, Mr. Olympia all day. When you turn to the back, I still think he's going to be exposed by Derek. I don't even know if his back's going to be better than Nick's this time. But, uh, but I know everything else is there. So, you know, I think he, he needs another year. I think he needs another year. But I do have him in the top three. Definitely have him in the top three. Um, I don't know what to say about Hottie. I, don't, I, I mean, I, you know, I feel like he's going to be third. I feel like Derek's going to be – I mean, he's going to be the second – Derek's going to be first. That's what I feel. I feel like even if it's close, Derek's going to give Derek the nod. I just feel like he's so popular right now. His YouTube channel is doing crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. He's got such a legion of people following him. I mean, next to Nick, I think he's overtaking Nick as being the most uh, popular bodybuilder. Open guy. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, nobody's... Top bum stand. I'm not right. right. I, I, I feel so, you. Know. But I think Derek's real. I think Derek's a distant second to bum stand, and I don't think there's anybody of, um, before him. So, here's my question. Maybe ours. Who's time. more conditioned, Samson or Nick? Nick. Okay. If what you say is true, Nick should be Samson to Donald. Well, time out. Nick played a wrong game, though. Because Nick got exposed because as when he's flat, not full-blown like he was last Olympia, then his lack of shape gets eaten up by Samson. And Samson is every bit as big as Nick. So now you only have two things. He's bigger than Nick. He is bigger than Nick. Okay, you're making my point for me. Because Samson is bigger than Nick, and his symmetry is better than Nick. And Eric's. And Howdy's. I don't know if his symmetry is better than Derek's. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I feel what you're saying that it's close, but Derek, because he is so compact, there's no areas that are really weak. His area that was weak last year that had him lose to Hottie was the muscle maturity going through the front and the mm-hmm. chest and through the, the abdominals and his delts and stuff like that. But when you look at, when you look at uh, Nick mm-hmm. and you put him up there, just... If he's full blown, then he can he I mean any of those guys are off a little bit, he's gonna slide right past him. But I'm not saying Nick's gonna beat Samson. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I think I said I had Samson in uh third, right? You have a third. third. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so I, I can Nick in fourth. I have well, Nick Brandon in fourth, fourth, Nick in fourth no well, Nick in fourth, Brandon in fifth. Uh-huh. Brandon in fifth, right? I Don't believe. I think Andrew Jack's going to be in that sixth spot. Um, I kind of feel like Andrew's going to make the top five. I got the feeling yeah. he's going to make the top five, which means I have to throw somebody else out there. Like, but I just can't see Nick coming in sixth place. You know what I mean? I just can't see it. It doesn't matter what you can see. It's what's going to happen. I feel like it's going to. I feel like everybody's going to rise. Nick's going to drop, slide a little. I don't see him sliding that much. Okay, so it's sliding that much. If the one, two, three are fixed in any combination, Hadi, we agree on that. Samson, Derek, whatever combination. Right. Fourth, 
is Nick beating Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind okay. of feeling like it's going to go that way. And then Brandon is Nick yeah. going to beat Andrew with the improvements that Andrew's made show after show after show? I still feel like, I, I mean, I mean, I, I hope I'm wrong because I like Andrew Jack. But I feel like Andrew still needs another year of filling out because when, even when he was up there against Hunter, Hunter looked really thick. Nick's way bigger than Hunter. Mm-hmm. So, and Hunter pushed um, Andrew at the night show. Mm-hmm. Not in the morning. He's, you know, Andrew easily won out in the morning. But when they tightened uh, um, Hunter up, he pushed him because he had the muscle mm-hmm. to match him, right? And then he had a couple shots that he was actually beating Andrew in. Only a couple. But the point is, I think Nick would, is smashing Hunter from the gate. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, I don't think he's ready to beat <laughs> Nick quite yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a subjective, a subjective. It's story. so subjective, man. It's so subjective. It's, it's, it, the question is going to become how aesthetic do they want? It's always be. about what the judges want. You know? Right. But the thing right now is I just feel like everything is trending towards Derek Wayne. Sure. And from the standpoint, he's a good guy, mm-hmm. heavy faith based. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's a good looking dude. He's really him, Nick, Brandon, and um, Samson. No, him, Nick, and Brandon are the Americans in a uh-huh. minute, right? And the thing is, Hottie's doing a, a lot for the sport overseas, uh-huh. but he's not existing to us over here. Samson's doing a tour over here, doing tours over here, doing shows, winning shows. So the arguments moot. I mean, the Samson speaks English. Arguably better than those three put together. Better than Nick, Garrett. Oh, he does not speak better than English. And Derek's from South. He's English. British. <laughs> the hell? He's, he's, he's he, British. He speaks the king's tongue. He's, he's saying. British. Is all I'm saying. Oh man. Oh, Listen, he, Samson. I need you to be clear, sir. When I met you with the Arnold, I gave you the show hands down. I was right then. I'm right now. You're winning the show. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I just, you know, like I honestly, I, I um, I'm a fan of his physique, but. I'm just, I haven't really gotten into Samson like that. Like, I find myself waiting for uh, Derek's podcast to come out. I mean, not podcast, his uh, YouTube to come mm-hmm. out every week, you know. I got him. When I was getting ready for the Masters, I was looking forward to that. Him and Hunter's uh, YouTubes mm-hmm. every week, so. But, um, no doubt. I mean, they're all working really hard. I mean, you see Andrew Jack's workouts with crazy man Chris Psycho Lewis. Mm-hmm. Those workouts are nuts. And, um. And, um, and, and I think that the the, the semi update we got to Andrew today. Yeah. Listen. You I, look crazy? Bruh. You look crazy? I don't think I saw that. Let me look that up real quick. Let me see that. It was on his Instagram? Uh no, I saw it on uh I think I saw it on Fozzy Fitness. So they had to get it from his Instagram. Probably. Right, right yeah. Was it on Psychos or was it on... Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you one second. So, that's heating up, of course. How about, uh... How about, uh... Over there with, um... The, the men's classic. And... Rough Brian Diesel. And Rough Diesel. Brian looked great in his pictures today, too. Really good. Really good. I was really impressed with him. Um... Rough Diesel, of course, he just he's smoked the last two shows, two shows in, a row. in a row. He looks great. Um, you know, so I'm I'm really excited to see. Obviously, Bumstead is going to look crazy. Urge is looking crazy. It's going to be Bumstead. It's going to be Rough Diesel taking back his second chair. I think Breon goes out in third for his last classic Olympia. Okay. You think you're going to beat Urge and Dino? Nice. Nice. I don't think that... I don't think that in classic, it's as easy to dismiss former champions, right? They're always going to be in that top five, top three mix, mm-hmm. you know. Well, hell, until last year, it wasn't easy to dismiss former champions. I know. Bodybuilding either. Yeah. I again, I still say, Rami getting fifth was a was a aberration from only because he missed and didn't let anybody know the guest posing in May for Jim Manning. Yep. Like that that was 
you know, it was it wasn't like they were necessarily punishing him, but because he wasn't clearly out doing anyone else, they did not give him a gift. Right. Right. Like where I think sometimes, as a former Mr. Olympia, they're like, well, we're not going to let him go less than third, so you know, it's going to be in that third spot. In the mix. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think they treated him the way he treated them in May. You know. So I think with uh, the classic, though, I'm, I'm actually excited to see that this year because I think um, my my take on Dino is he doesn't have the width or the taper of Bumstead. Yeah, but um, he's nuts. He does look nuts. I mean, he looks crazy nuts. Yeah. Which is why I can't discount my man Andrew Jack because he looks nuts and he's going to look crazier this time because you know Chris is going to bring him so chiseled, so hey. peeled. My, my fear with him is that he'll be so peeled, but will he be full enough? Sure. Was he, he, I, I think that at that level, I think everybody's going to be peeled. I think that the other small things, I I thought it was dumb impressive that there was not one drop of sweat on well, him. I think that's at that Texas Pro. I think that's indicative of um, a Chris uh, Cito athlete, and I say that because. When I was up against these guys and they were working us at night mm -hmm. and they were running us through, I think they ran us through four rounds at night. I didn't sweat one, one bead of sweat either, yet these guys next to me were sweating their asses off. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't, I mean, and I did practice a lot. I did practice a lot, but I don't know that I practiced enough for four rounds plus some. Like I was cool, I could have kept going. So obviously my endurance was good, but still, I didn't, the lights were hot and I didn't sweat them. Sweat a beat right. sweat either. So um, I think without question, he's going to be in crazy condition. Without question, he's going to be bigger than he was at the last mm -hmm. show. The, the idea is will he be full enough throughout the entire judging? Because I think what ends up happening is you have the first initial judging, and you know, if you and you do local NPC shows or nationals, <clears throat> they're looking at you a few times and they've, they've got their mind made up. Right. When it comes to Olympia, they're in, they're going to work you three, four, five rounds Until if somebody. necessary because everybody's so evenly matched. Everyone has their right. thing, you know. Like Andrew's beautiful aesthetics. No one's matching those aesthetics. Um, you know, Samson's crazy legs, and crazy mass, and you know, and along with aesthetics, you got Nick's freakiness. You got Derek's beautiful shape with his freakiness on that mm -hmm. short body. Hottie's absolutely going to be crazy, rocked out. I mean, all these guys are going to have their thing that makes them amazing because they're the 1% of the 1%, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to work these guys. They're going to work them hard, you know. Which brings me, like, you know, you saw Kamal dropped out. About, of course, about out, right. And, uh, you know, because his brother's got cancer or whatever, and he's right. big in his family. And But it made me think because I was like, Obviously, without question, that one one goal was to win the Masters. But afterwards, I remember thinking to myself, had I won, how would I have trained for the Olympia? And why I say that is because when I trained for the Masters, I believed 110% I could win. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it meant I had to do cardio until I killed myself, if it meant I had to eat nothing, I was going to do it because I believed 100% I was going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was doing Olympia, I know I'm not winning. So, <laughs> therefore, uh, I got a headache. I'm going to do my 60 minutes of cardio light today. You know, uh, my knee hurts a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do biceps and arms instead of legs today. Like, those things happen when you're not 100% mm -hmm. believing in your in your path, right? Like right. that's when you start deviating when you don't have hundred percent belief. So that was like I remember thinking like I had one thought like man when I win this thing, what am I gonna tell myself to make myself train? It had to be more than just winning the show. Right. I know I wasn't gonna win the show. You know, you know, you, you gotta be five seven, two hundred and fifty, two hundred and forty pounds sliced to the bone if you're gonna win the Olympia, right? At least. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um and I just remember being like, man, like, what, what would I, what would be the reason that's good enough to put myself through this 
For four more weeks. Or six more weeks. It would have been one. for um, eight, eight more, more weeks. Eight more weeks, yeah. yeah. Well, at the end of yeah, September, October, yeah. Eight more weeks of that, and um, I didn't have an answer. I would have had to figure that out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you want to represent your family and all that kind of stuff, but when I told my we would look great, we would look good, but to come in like crazy slice to where I'm like, man, I'm like fucking nasty. Yeah. It's like, right. Hmm. No, <laughs> again. I got. I have to think about this for a right. second, right? I feel you. You know, because that was rough. That was rough. And you're, you know, and, um, but, again, Kamal's not doing it. And uh, my best wishes to him and his family that he can, his brother has a speedy recovery and can get back to full health. So we can see Kamal rock out next year because he's always, years old. he's always a great competitor. He's definitely inspiration for me to keep me going. Because he's old, too. I'm definitely old. <laughs> Letting the gray um, <clears throat> show proudly, and uh, you need some midnight cocoa bean. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter is always like, "Dad, why don't you cut your hair off? You look old." And I'm like, "You know, actually, at this point in my life, I'm kind of proud of it because, right? Uh, I mean, because you know, you you, you when you're 20 something years old, mm -hmm. you can't imagine you still be training as hard as we're still training now. You know, like when I was." Training for that show, I'm training with a couple twenty year olds and I'm smoking them, you know, and, and uh, they're dying way before I die, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I, I didn't think I didn't think I didn't think I'd be doing that at this age, you know, and so I'm definitely not shying away from the fact that hey, we I'm forty eight, proud of it, and not sixty five, uh, Nick, not sixty yeah, five, forty eight, still accomplishing things, still moving up, still still not, you know, I'm not here, I'm still doing this. In all areas of my life, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm nothing wrong with the age as long as you're still accomplishing stuff. That's it. That's why I did the Mr. America last weekend. There you go. Two weekends ago. Congratulations Thanks, on the man. on the, the win. Up. I did my first full piloting meet. Congratulations. Didn't finish last. I was happy about that. You won. Yeah. Didn't finish last. <laughs> <this guy. laughs> and we had a mutual friend, my client. Um, uh -huh. and you were instrumental in her. Yeah, she did really time. good. <clears throat> she went up there and beat a lot of people for her first show, two seconds and a fourth. Um, and, you know, she ended up making every other person on stage look fat, which mm -hmm. is always the goal when you're, you know, when trying to get in the best shape of your life. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, like, she came into the gym in, you know, like, November, December last year, January maybe. Mm hmm. Not, didn't really know anything about lifting. Didn't know anything about um, competition. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to look good again. And she just looked like a regular person with a little more fluff than she wanted. And we were able to mold that into, <clears throat> and I know she leaned on you a lot too, so we were able to mold that into something that was pretty mm -hmm. special to where she got on stage and she felt amazing. A butterfly effect. Like your studio, right? Yeah, <laughs> you like that? You like that? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely um, one of those things where you know I'm super proud of her. It was, just, it was uh, and she never, you know, like she she never complained. Ha. To me. <laughs> she never, That's what I was for. <laughs> <laughs> and I know she didn't have the greatest support behind her. You know, it kind of like her her boyfriend even came up to me. He was like, man. I owe you an apology. I was a hater. I didn't believe in it. I said, this shit ain't gonna work. And he saw her on stage. He dropped a tear. He was, he was so oh, excited about her on stage. Chicken. You know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. um, you know, it, it was it was a cool experience. You know, it was definitely a cool Good. experience. I didn't get a chance to go because I was competing. You were competing. Otherwise, I'd have been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, so what do you think, man? You think Keon Pearson can, can beat uh, Sean Oof. No bet. No. no bet. I don't see it. No bet. I, I th you know. No bet. You know, I, Keon Pearson looks sick, bro. He does. I mean, and, and we know Sean Cleary is going to look sick, but it, it's going to come. It, 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 and they both have got flow, but Keon is like the 212 freaking Andrew Jack, bro. So you think and, he can beat him? Any given, I mean, we just saw Aaron Banks lose. Man, Fazeke, Aaron Banks, yes. Olympia lost the he Legion. lost at the Legion. But he was only like 85%. Doesn't matter. It matters. 
That matters. That's the fuel you needed to kick it up for. But that was eight. That's thirty. That's the biggest prize money. Thirty-five grand for the winner. What is the Olympia win? Fifty. Right, okay. So it's the biggest non-Olympia win. Who beat him? Damn, you know. Huh? He apparently the guy won won the Legion five times in a row. So this is his show. But I don't care. Do you? You're carrying the title, carrying the chink. You, you won the Arnold, you won the Mad, you won the Olympia. I mean, you don't go on the show and go lose. It doesn't matter who you are. But look, I mean, I don't see that being indicative of who he is. He could have just had a okay. Off so if Hadi Shuban went and did uh, the, the 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 whatever and di- and didn't win, then what? Big deal. Big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. But you know, like I I think, and this is what I truly feel. If you're Mr. Olympia. Mm-hmm. One, why are you doing another show? But two, you should be able to walk in most shows and just walk in at 85% and win, right? So I think Aaron Banks definitely put a chink in his armor because, you know, the judge is going to see him see him as beatable. And now everybody else training for it thinks he's beatable. Exactly. So Including Jerry Bondia, who ain't, right, who ain't, who ain't been in gym in five years. Bondia. Wouldn't that be something if he won? No. Something if he won. That'd be really bad, bro. What? I think it'd be bad. Why? His I know Jeremy, by the way. Shape, his shape ain't what it is. Ain't what men's physique is now. Why? Because he's too blocky. He's too blocky. His, his, his midsection is long like uh, the ashes. Yeah. In the yeah. middle. Yeah. And everyone now has got a lot more V taper yeah. than he had. You know, but he's changed a little bit. He's a little bigger now. The right? guy who trained with Phil Heath the other day, he's a legit threat, I think, to beat him. Really? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be Brandon. I don't think it's going to be the I other know. dude. I think it's going to be this I guy. Because this guy, I mean, even the way his shorts hang right there, you can see just his quads, just under his shorts. You can tell he trains his legs. It's a nice, even flow. It's everybody just a little bit bigger than his lower body. Not like the majority of the men's elite guys. Mm-hmm. I think that it's a. Uh, is he too big though? No. No. I gotta check this guy out. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm gonna be transparent. I'm not really up on the men's physique yeah. circuit. I know Jeremy because Jeremy reached out to me when I tore my back. We, him mm-hmm. and I, partied together in Miami one year. Like mm-hmm. he's he's a. I really like the guy a lot, and um, you know what he's going through to persevere through that. Yeah. Career. You know, he and shows how to come back. It's tough. Love of maturity. He tore his back like I did. Um, you know, and it's crazy because I thought, you know, tearing my pack was a death sentence on my career. But then you see Charles. Um, Charles Griffin. Griffin came to the show. He looked like a fucking rock, man. He looks so it, good, it, bro. You know, I, it, it, it's tragic because I want to see him make top 10, top 9, but it's just too stacked. Well, he the also top ten spots. Yeah, like what? Here, here's the thing: like the top, the guys that they're talking about the top, they, uh, excuse me, they look unreal. Like Charles looked unreally un- and hard, but the it, it wasn't. Okay. It's just something different. There's yep. just that notch. Like the year that Sean Roden won the Olympia. It was like Sean and Phil and then everybody else. And Roly looked crazy. Roly was third. Third, there. yeah. One the, uh, but Roly wasn't any, anywhere close to those two. Yeah. It was just a different look. And yeah. like, right now, like I can't remember a year where so many people I thought had a realistic chance of winning. Yeah. I really can't remember a year like this because like, legit, you can make an argument for why each of the top five or six guys could the make win. a run and win. Even the top seven if you include Hunter and Andrew. Well, I'm considering uh, uh, Andrew in the top six. Uh huh. I don't. Crizzo, if you if you if you like Nick, then you can't not like Crizzo. Yeah, I guess I can. Well, I, why? Crizzo looks good. I I, just, uh, I feel like he's still. He has no ass. That's it. He has no glutes. Oh, I mean, that's a big part. That's, but that's but that's his genetics. Like his genetics is he has no ass. Well, he, I mean, no I, I had no thing. ass either, and I, and I worked hard to build it to match. So, like, the thing is, but here, here here's, uh, Crizzo doesn't do it for me. I know you like Crizzo. I like Crizzo because I, I, I don't see Crizzo. I see Crizzo ninth or 10th. 
Okay. Which is still an improvement from last. Five places, yeah. Um, but I'm seeing, um, you know, when you're looking at, like, it's like Mason Diaz. He looked amazing. He won his shows. Um, but I, you put him up next to Derek, and he's just going to be like, mm. right? So you have the guys that are at the Olympia level that are just like, wow. And then they're still miles apart. Right. Yeah. And they're miles apart from the other pros that won the regular shows. And it's crazy because... I think it's crazy though. Nathan won what eleven pro shows? Who? Nathan Dash had eleven pro wins. Yeah, but they're all most of them are overseas, right? So it's well, a, he lives overseas. It's a different level of competition. Okay. It is. I mean, all the um, like. I mean, even look at um, when I was coming up, we would always go overseas and do that European tour. And even if I, the best I ever mustered at the Olympia was twelfth, I was consistently in the top ten overseas all the time. Um, almost every time I competed overseas, I was top 10. And then a couple times I was top 2, top 3, top 4. So, and it would be all the guys that were trying to qualify for the Olympia, right? So, it, it's a different level. It's a different level than, than over here. Um, and I don't know why that is. I think it's the food, to be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. food is so expensive everywhere else compared mm -hmm. to here. Um, the quality of food, as much as people want to say, like, our quality of food is bad, it's Protein wise, it's better here than anywhere mm -hmm. else, and um, and I because we all got the same drugs, we all got the same. Everyone knows how to train. There's no training secrets that can't be found. Um, Oxygen Jimmy make some special shit though. You what? Oxygen and Jimmy make some special shit though. They do, but their people don't always win. The, I mean, they're they're not putting out Mr. Olympia champions as quickly as Hani is, right? Right. They're not putting out Olympia champions like we are over here. So yeah. you know, you had you right. had a few like, and if you realistically look and think about it, you had. Um, Brandon went over there, and it was a home run. But why? Because Brandon was already the prodigy. He was already gifted. He just needed to get away from all the distractions. He was able to put his head down, put the blinders on, mm -hmm. and go full throttle into the show. And, that, and when you have five kids, and you, I mean, I'm a, from experience, I'm telling you, when you have all these kids, they always got events. They got this. They got that. And it's hard to look at them in the face and say, Dad can't. I gotta go do this. Mm -hmm. Dad can't, I gotta get my rest. Dad, mm -hmm. you ain't doing that. You ain't looking at your kid if you're a good father and saying that. Right. And so by him not being present, it wasn't an option. Right. He, he was there for one purpose. Right. Bodybuilding. And it paid big dividends. It took him from being um, a, C, a C level pro, that are, I would say, I'll say a B level pro, mm -hmm. to being the man. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so it, it was a great opportunity. and. You know, that was supposed to be my opportunity. I got sick, couldn't do it. But um, who knows what would happen if I did go, you know. But I, I know for me, it was always a balance connect. Kids, family, you know, training, God, all that stuff. It was like mm -hmm. always a balancing act. And to be able to go to a place where you could literally just be like. Just train. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Just be dialed in. It's amazing. Yeah. No business to worry about, nothing. Like just, and they, you know, they take care of you, compensate you while you're over there. Yeah, you did. That's you know, hard. I don't, you know, I don't have a, I, I'm a realist when it comes to being competing in, I feel competing in NPC and, you know, um, I know how far I can get off of just genetics and good looks, but at the same time. <laughs> good looks, huh? Yeah, well. I love it. But. You know, the, the, the reality is that, um. I'm going to do my after shows and I'm going to do the NPC show. If I earn a pro card in NPC and become happy pro, great. And I'll hopefully this year, 2024, get a pro card in one of the bigger national divisions and either OCB or WMBF, and that's it. Well, I honestly, see, I honestly believe as a natty, we can get a pro card in the NPC. I, I truly 100% believe that. Um, am I sitting here saying you can win the Amateur Olympia? No, but what I am saying is, do I think you can go to Masters Nationals and get a pro card? Absolutely, um, without question, because you carry enough size that if we don't worry about weight mm -hmm. and just worry about the details that we're presenting, you know, chisel detail that we're presenting, and but you know, it's all—it's not even about mindset with you. It's about the ability to be able to focus on it because, like, you know, you got this great business you're, you're running. You're still doing your clients in other states. Like, that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Um, How do you track them? Well, that's a start. That's a start. Whatever. 
Um, we're not announcing that I can announce it. Okay. But she she has competed in the Olympia in the Olympic in Olympics. They won a gold medal. Nice. Nice. That's dope. Yes. That's 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 uh, credibility. That's credibility. That's credibility. Yeah, definitely. So um, that's coming and hopefully next week or two. Man, that is awesome, man. I am so glad to hear that for you because, um, you know, that's what so many people miss out on is that am I in the right atmosphere and do I have the right people around me? That's it. Right? Like, though, I was saying this to somebody the other day, like, because he's in his 60s and he's getting ready to do a show. And last year when we did the show, it was his first show head down, no deviations, and he looked phenomenal. He out-conditioned everybody else. Not the best shape, but he out-conditioned everybody else to was second place um, out of you know, seven or eight guys. Um, first show, needs to put size on. So this year he's a lot bigger. Uh, his shape has improved. Mm -hmm. And we're going into the show and he's having the hardest time sticking to the diet. And what's the difference? One, his relationship with his wife is a whole lot better. A mm -hmm. whole lot better. Which means his family dynamic is a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. You would think that would be a good thing. But the, the negative in that is, it, he feels good from that. Mm -hmm. So the desire to make this the priority and forego that time with his family isn't there. Mm -hmm. Is not, you know, so the show is not, I got to do it for validation. His family's giving him that validation. Mm -hmm. And so having the right influence, meaning your family is looking at you saying, Dad, we love you. You know you're supposed to be doing X, Y, and Z. And that's like mm -hmm. what I have in my family. My kids know what it takes for me to get in the shape I need to get into. So even if Dad is having a bad moment... They say stuff to me like, well, you know, this is what it takes. You know, if you weren't feeling like this, you wouldn't be close to where you need to be. This is what you got to do. And, you know, my girlfriend, Janine, just her first year in it, she would say things like, in the beginning, in the beginning, she would say stuff like, oh, I wish you didn't have to feel like this. Oh, I wish you... And you don't need to hear that kind of stuff because nope. what you want to hear is what she was doing after she got it and really was in there with me. And, you know, she would say stuff like, you got this, babe. Come on. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. That's right. If it were easy, it wouldn't. the reward wouldn't be so wonderful when you got it. Like, she started saying all the right things and that emotional support. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. You don't need your spouse looking at you going, it's okay, babe. Lay Just in have bed. a seat. Right. Yeah. Lay in bed with me. Like, that's the hardest part when you, you know, Bro. you're laying in with your girl. It's the worst. Skin on skin. You're feeling good. You don't want to get up. It's cold outside, especially mm -hmm. when you diet in the winter. Yeah. We're going to go into the... The, the colder part of the year, right? Oh, uh, lay with me a little longer. You don't need that. You want your girl to look at you and like, get your ass up and go do that cardio. Or, better yet, be right next to you doing the cardio with you. Yeah, mm, maybe. But <laughs> if you got that, you got it all. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't know if that's a necessarily a thing you're going to, most people are going to get. Right. But what I'm saying is, at least, but I'm with you, yes. If you have that person grind with you, mm -hmm. train with you, you're winning. Um, but if you have that person that will push you out of bed, go do your cardio. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why I say thank you to Janine because at the end she was like, hey, I know you say that you don't have to do your cardio fasted, but try it. Do it. <laughs> I was, you know, and my rationale, <laughs> rationale in the beginning was, you know, I'm up super late. Yep. So I'm doing that cardio super late. So I don't have any meals after I do the cardio. So I'm in essence getting the same effect. And it did work all the way up into that last bit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I remember, like, God, it's been a week, my glutes are still not fucking in. It was like, at that point, it seems like you're looking in the mirror every three days and something's changing. Right. And then she was like, you just need to do your cardio in the morning. And when she first said it, I'm like, you know what she's talking about? I know what I'm doing. Just thought about it, marinated on the day, started doing my cardio in the morning, things start moving again. And was it a cardio in the morning or just another variable we changed? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But the point is, it worked. And uh, right. it was her giving me that push to say, hey, babe, go do it. You know, come on, go do it. It's only temporary. In a couple weeks, 
that made a difference. If you don't have that right support around you, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with you, million percent. You know, that's the, I, I appreciate my wife because, you know, this has been like a prep. You know, opening this spot has yeah. been, you know, long hours. I mean, even right. being here now, she cussed me out right now. You said you'd be home early. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. But it's we're building something, man. You know, and it's it's with anything, you know. Um, put your head down. Those four, six, eight months, and we look up, and you're miles ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 what it takes to to, to literally achieve anything great. Because so many people quit along the way. Yeah. Or it's good enough. Yeah. When the reality is. It, it really ain't. If you still got more to give, keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's silly to to short yourself and short the success that you could possibly have by ending it early. You know, not paying attention to little things, you know. Uh, not wiping down equipment every single day. Not sweeping, mopping, doing it yourself. So when it's big enough and you got four, five, eight janitors cleaning up, they can't say, you don't know what's like to clean this up yet. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which allows you to look at them and say, I know you can do better. Exactly. I know you can do better because you used to do it yourself. That's right. So, yeah. you know, it's it's that level of tenacity and aggressive winner take all. Don't leave anything on the table that's going to separate you from from everybody else in the same space that you're doing. You know, I'm, I, I'm a big believer that, that part of the success that any of us has is because of that. Willingness to be uncomfortable. Yeah, got to be uncomfortable. I think the biggest part also is like just recognizing that everybody that works walks through your door has to be part, like has to be feel like family, mm -hmm. right? Like it's business, but after we make that payment and after I, you're a part of my my my, my family, time. right? Right, my team, my family. However you want to look at it, because there's so many options. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first bought my gym back in 2000, 23 years ago, there was me and a guy 15 miles away in North Wilmington that had gyms like we had. Mm -hmm. Hardcore, where you could train squat heavy, bench heavy, dumbbell press up to 160s. You know, there was only two gyms in Delaware. Um, oh, actually, the training center was there too. But they, you know, they hadn't really opened up yet and they were they were a hardcore gym but it was golds and golds right and you had the training center was trying to compete and I remember when I bought it it was like man it was like people were in droves because you know this gym was you know we had we placed all the dumbbells we put some new cardio in new equipment mm -hmm. and it was like Phew. you really have to be you didn't have to worry about everybody feeling like family because they didn't have no other options. Now, man, like, yeah. you know, I went into the YMCA in Middletown here, and I'm like, you guys make it really hard if you don't have a niche to stay in business because, like, you have a niche. Like, yep. you're not going to go in YMCA and get what you got. Nope. But if I'm trying to open a big box gym and I don't have it niched out, like, how do you compete against that? Like, how's village? I mean, I don't know, but... I'm not going to spare it. Yeah, for sure. Thank everybody, you know. I, I am grateful that I had the dream of doing this, you know, and then wasn't afraid to go feet first. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, you got to, you know, the thing is, you come in, got nice equipment, but more importantly, you got the experience. Yeah. Right? The person's getting educated, mm -hmm. learning, motivated constantly challenged they can't come in and just nope not here because you know it's it, you have a one on one feel consistently mm -hmm. and you're only accepting limiting you're not opening up to a million members you're right. you're, you're, screen them. You're, you're, yeah. you're you're selective in what you're choosing so people come in and they can feel like man it's an honor to be part of this almost like a charter school as opposed to a, a private school right, right? so right. um and that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing you got going on here. But like, if I was to open up a gym down here, I would really have to strategically position myself mm -hmm. and say, this is why I'm better than the YMCA. And when I went in there the other day, I was like, damn, y'all got the turf going out into the 
outside of, <laughs> like... Listen, I, 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 I don't know. I, you know, what my vision is for here, nobody's going to have it. Right. You know, right. when I finish and have everything exactly I want in the next 6 to 12 months. Well, and, and again, listen to what you said. Your vision, your plan. Yep. You know, like, you have such faith in that plan because you know what you're passionate about and you know your why and why you're doing it, right? Because right. you've seen the countless, countless <laughs> people you've been able to help and it changes their life forever. And it's like, if I can do that on a larger scale, mm -hmm. right, and teach others to be able to do it the way I do it, like, it's priceless, you know, what you can do. It's, but the main thing is what you're saying is your vision. You have mm -hmm. a clear-cut vision. You know, and, and a lot of times, what's the vision? That's like, it. Most people walk around, they don't really have a vision for what they want. Or they have a dream. And that's it. No action. Nothing. Well, see, people I, want to be a want to do a business, want to open it, want to open it. Okay. Yeah, but do they though? Like, like they do in the moment, but is it for the right reasons? Right. Yeah. Right. Like, like we all want to make money. There's a million different ways to make money. Yeah. But is your vision so set in stone and understandable that you know why you're doing it beyond the money? Mm -hmm. Right. Like when I see these young kids, this is why I'm excited about being at Diamond State. Right. I see these young kids and they're trying to pose, they're trying to do this. I'm like, wow lot of raw material to work with to create something really special. There. Right. You know, and when I was, you know, talking with the owners there, it's the same thing. They, like, have this vision of being this great, big family community of awesome powerlifters, bodybuilders, and others, mm -hmm. whatever, other strength sport, right? And that's, like, awesome. Because for me, you come to my office... It's not like, come in, get out, come in, get out. What is it? Big fucking... Hang out. Right. Big fucking party in my office. Like today. Today, we were in there and like people walk in. Oh, we got a full house in here. Yeah. Two of the people were already done. We're just sitting there laughing, joking, talking about stuff, you know, and motivating because the people get so motivated by working because sometimes when you're tired and you're mm -hmm. beat up and you're feeling it, like knowing that, man, my coach is not just my coach he's also my buddy I want to do this for him you know That's I don't right. want to embarrass him you know I want to make sure that he is proud of me and you know that's the way I feel when I'm training with my trainer like I want to make sure my trainer is proud of me you know that's what I mean right. and when I was doing the show I want to make sure my athletes are proud of me you know because it's a two way effect they motivate me I motivate them that's right you know that's so right. it's like having that vision for what you really truly want mm -hmm. you know and people always have told me for years you could do this this and this I'm interested in doing that. I like the community where we have a good time. We work really hard, make noise. We are a little outlandish. Yeah, you're yelling here, though. Listen, ain't no yelling and dropping a weed while Yeah, you got a different vision. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they do be crying, you know, I had a client here the other day, bro. You know, I'm getting t-shirts made. Okay, I'm getting t-shirts made. All the same, these people tell me. I got one lady. Okay, favorite word is motherfucker. <laughs> so she be motherfucker every time the next exercise motherfucker everywhere right right, right. another one Dios mio every, every. <laughs> but my favorite one are you sure about that Walter that's my favorite one that is my favorite one right, where are you gonna put that at it's right across are you sure about that Walter I love it I love it <laughs> I love it in the bottom yep <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it but that's you know and, and it's it's again once my photos go up we gotta get a good photo too, because I don't have a good photo of us. But we, uh, my photos are going up, but it'll probably be the next week or so, because I have almost all of them all printed out that I want to do. So I'm excited, man. Yeah. You gotta come see the office too when you get time, because we have all the photos of my old magazine articles and all that kind of stuff. Finally, all organized. All organized up on, the, up on the wall. And then uh, we have, um, as you walk into the office, the, the, the um, photos of before and afters on this wall. And then competitors on this wall, and then we have. Um, you don't have my Olympia photo up there, though, y'all. He threw my shit away. Definitely did not throw it away. <laughs> it ain't on the wall, though. We get ready. To, we gonna make it even better this year. <laughs> um, and the um, and then in, in my in my office space are the articles and uh -huh. the latest picture from the Olympia and all that stuff. But um, 
it's great. Janine did all of it. She made she made it look amazing. But uh, it's constant motivation for me too. Sure. You know, and it's good motivation for the clients. And um, yeah, article printed. I got my article printed out finally. It'll be three weeks and we did put it on the wall right over there in that area. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that part. But um, yeah, man, it's um, but definitely inspiring people. That's what we do. And um, inspiring each other. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I, I repost everything you put out there. You know, and, yeah, I because know. you know, like what you're doing, I'm super proud of you down here. You had a, we talked about this a year ago, and you made it happen. And it's so awesome. Hit you brother, I was kidding. Talking shit. Definitely did not. <laughs> talking shit. Did you wait? I talk a lot of shit. I'm not gonna lie. I talk a lot of shit. Well, you brought this opportunity to me, and I, and I was honest with you. I said, you know yep. what? I'm not in a position mentally to want to do this right now. And I think all I would have been doing is holding you back anyway. So you went ahead with this, and you yeah. went full force. And, you know, it's actually looking like it's going to put us both in a position where it gives us more power to collaborate down the road. Exactly. You know, so. I got something good announcing coming out in the next two weeks to you all. All right. Ready for something big. Come always, on, something, always working on something. Listen, I, I can't, you know, it, look, this part is great. Once I get the pictures on the wall, then I can announce the next part. Okay. And then the next part. And well, that part is going to be the kickoff. So you got a plan? Bruh. We working on something? Bruh. We working on something? I got all the things in place. We in the lab working on something. Listen, I'm always, you know, it, it's, it, you know, the, the risk of going too long today, you know, the, you know, Goggins, you know, one of the guys I was to every single morning when I go for cardio, he says, okay, you lost weight, now what? Yeah. You did triathlon, now what? Yeah, now what? You made the NFL, now what? Now what? You made it, became a doctor, now what? Yeah. So, yep. okay, I got the door open. It looks nice. Yep. But now what? Yeah, I feel you. You know, how can I continually get better in with just what I want, you know, for me, I think we talked about it a little bit before, is my vision isn't just about the people that walk to my door, it's the families that those people are connected to. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to create bodybuilders. But you are trying to create a better generation. Exactly. Boom, yes. You know, it's 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 about the moms and the dads who are eating better, living better. Teaching now, their kids. Who is now infecting their kids with that knowledge of Absolutely. we're gonna eat right. Because if you eat right, you're going to stay sharper in school yeah, yeah. and make better grades and create more opportunities for yourself and create change in those around you so you can live longer, make more money, and take care of your family for a lot longer. And that is yeah. what the... It's awesome you say that because I had a couple in my office today. You know, she, her baby is, is only nine months old. She mm -hmm. looks like she never had a baby. She looks awesome. We started with her six weeks after she gave mm -hmm. birth. And her husband has dropped weight, but he's you know stronger than he's ever than he's been in years. He owns mm -hmm. a bunch of businesses, and we're in there talking about it. And what they said, you know, the craziest thing is our son eats what we eat. That's it. And when he went back to the doctor, the doctor's like, he's had a bigger growth spurt than he would have ever imagined. And he's like, it's got to be because of the nutrition, mm -hmm. because the kid has gotten. Um, significantly bigger mm -hmm. than he was whenever the last appointment was way more than was predicted and um, th and he's way healthier hasn't been sick as much nothing so you know the food is is, is, a, is a trick man the food is a trick but more importantly the influences we have as parents on our children mm -hmm. is even bigger and it, by you having that idea or that mindset to say if I can help these parents to help these children it's huge it's huge because it's kind of out of control bro it's out of control like I was in um it's literally a national defense nightmare bro I I, I was in uh God, where was I the other day I was there with the kids and I'm just looking around like god there's like nobody even in okay shape here like everybody it's bad yeah yeah, it's unfortunate the body, the body fat is prevalent. You know, I, but, I have a client who's a high-ranking officer in the military, and there was an article written the other day talking about just that. 
that they keep having to lower the standards. That's what I'm saying. To about get military people, yes. to get people into the military. That's crazy, man. But I, you know, it's like shit. Do I need to go sign up? Oh, I can't. I'm over 37. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? Like, how can you expect any difference? Because the kids nowadays don't have to be active. Nope. They can stimulate themselves 100 percent with stuff that doesn't require no energy. Bingo. Doesn't require like we literally were bored. We had to go Have outside. to make up shit. Let's play freeze tag. Kids ain't playing freeze tag. tag. They know what that means. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like kickball. The hell is that? I mean, you know, they play their sports, but if you're not playing sports, it's like literally you can go every day without exercise. You couldn't do that when we were younger. Nope. Everything required something. Yep. Right, so even the fat kids played. Oh, I, was fat. I played all the time. Right, I was in good shape. <laughs> Poly pole boy, but I was in good shape, you know. And the thing is, you don't have to be in any kind of shape because you can sit in front of a computer, you can sit in front of your mm -hmm. gaming. So, from the standpoint of socialization, I don't believe it that you know the kids are not socialized, they socialize differently. I don't believe that it's counterproductive mentally, but physically, without question, we're getting asses kicked, huh? We're getting asses kicked, absolutely. No, I'm making my ass kick, but you know, physically it's 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 kind of. They wouldn't know why I don't run. That's why I don't run. Don't you go for runs, Walter? No. They say why not? Because I haven't met that guy yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, you don't run. No, I, I definitely don't. You run. definitely met that guy well, yet. Well, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I stopped running. That's exactly. But in 2003, when I got cut the last time. I stopped running. <laughs> That's because you're. That's it, bro. Running. I was done. <laughs> you took it to the max level. Like, I'm gonna run for it now. Yeah, no. I mean, honestly, well, I used to run to get in shape for shows up until I was uh, competing over 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it, and actually, like carrying the muscles while I run. But when I was tore my pack, I was running around with the kids quite a bit because I had dropped a lot of muscle weight. Mm -hmm. And I was a little heavier, I mean, body fat wise, and but I was lighter, way lighter, and I had more endurance because I didn't have all those muscle tissue to supply oxygen to. Right. But um, yeah, man. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, if I can leave the audience with anything this week that I kind of learned, it's like start your day off in complete gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude for what you what you have in your life that you can be thankful for. And it will set your day off perfect. Like, instead of thinking, God, I wish I could lose more weight. Thank God for waking up. Thank God for your children being happy, healthy. Thank God for your spouse being healthy. Thank God for all the wonderful things that for the you have. For the Just press the wrong button. Yeah, the microwave went off. Um, <laughs> just thank, just thank God for all the wonderful things you got going on in your life. That you know, we always want more, and we can always talk about what's wrong. So try, start thinking about what's right, and think, start thanking God for what you get to do every day. Not what you got to do, not what you have to do, but what you get to do every day. Mm -hmm. And it will frame your mindset to start thinking completely positive, and uh, your whole day will be better. So. All right. That's all I got. You good? I'm um, down. Yeah, that sums it up perfectly. Perfectly. So, you guys have a great week. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you want to hear. Um, and have a great week. Next week, we're going to talk about the Women's Olympia. Women's Olympia. I better, I better study. Study. I'll yeah. study. Peace. Peace.